Today we are going to study examination of gastrointestinal tract. As with any other examination, examination of GIT also starts with your introduction, consent, position of patient. It is good practice to ask about pain or tender area before examination begins. We begins our examination with general inspection. Observe general state of patient. Is he looking ill? Kachaksik. Or well, his hydration status. BMI is patient in distress or in pain. Then look at hands. Is there any clubbing? Coil and nicia. Signs of liver diseases which include palmarithema. You can also watch our examination of hands video for more details about hands. In arms check pulse and BP. Look for spider nevi. Check. Is there as any bruising or arteriovenous fistula? Then examine lymph node of the neck. JVP, if it is raised, that may suggest fluid overload. Look for scars. In face. Look pallor. Joindus and spider nevi. Look for parotid swelling. Examine mouth check his dental hygiene status. Look for angular stomatitis. Is there any ulcer or pigmentation? We examine abdomen with details in the next part of this video. In goins. Look is there any bulging that may suggest hernia? Check for lymphadenopathy. Then ask patient to examine genitalia and perianal area. Do rectal and scrotal examinations. Check ankle edema. Now we start our examination of abdomen with details. It always starts with inspection. Examine patient in good light and warm surrounding. Make sure your patient is in comfortably supine position with resting on pillow that relaxes his abdomen muscles. Expose abdomen from xiphistinum to pubic symphysis. Stand at patient's foot end and observe shape and symmetry of abdomen. Type of respiration. Umbilicus. Is it inverted? Is there any scars, visible pulsation or any other mark? Normal findings include bilaterally symmetrical flat or slightly scaphoid abdomen. Umbilicus is inverted. No scars and no visible pulsation. Abnormal findings include hemangiomas, stria, bruising or scratch marks on skin. Abnormal prominent veins which may suggest portal hypertension. Distended abdomen. Abdominal scars or stomas. Have a look on different types of scars on abdomen. Now look at different stomas you may encounter while examining abdomen. After inspection, come close to patient for palpation. Before palpation make sure your hands are warm. Ask patient about any painful or tender area. Ask patient to rest his arms on sides to help relax abdominal muscles. Your palpation begins with light touch for tenderness. While palpating observe patient's face for any signs of discomfort. Move your hand gently in all quadrant of abdomen in S shape then repeat this with deep palpation for any mass lesion. If you detect any mass there note its characteristics, which may include its height, size, surface, shape, and consistency. Lastly palpate for organomegaly. Abnormal findings include tenderness, its site is very important. If it occur in epigastrium it may suggest peptic ulcers. If it is present in right hypochondrium suggest cholecystitis. Left iliac fossa for diverticulitis. Right iliac fossa suggest appendicitis. If palpation provoke pain it may result in voluntary guarding. But if there is inflammation of parietal peritoneum it cause involuntary guarding. Board-like rigidity present in generalized peritonitis. Abdominal wall no longer moves with respiration. Check for any palpable mass. Hard nodule may present at umbilicus which may suggest metastatic cancer of abdomen. Organs to palpate include liver, spleen, kidneys, bladder and aorta. While palpating liver, place your hand flat on the right iliac fossa. Point finger upwards, lateral to rectus muscle. Ask patient to breathe in deeply. Feel the liver edge as it descends on inspiration. 
Move your hand progressively up the abdomen one centimeter at a time between each breath patient takes until you reach costal margin or detect liver edge. If you feel liver edge describe its size, surface, edge. Is it smooth or irregular and consistency? Causes of hepatomegaly include alcoholic liver disease, hepatitis, hepatocellular carcinoma, lymphoma, leukemia, and malophobrosis. While palpating spleen, place your hand over the umbilicus, ask patient to breathe in deeply. Feel splenic edge as it descends on inspiration. Move your hand diagonally upwards towards the left hypochondrium one centimeter at a time between each breath. Feel the costal margin along its length. If you can't feel the splenic edge, ask patient to roll towards you and repeat the above. Palpate with your right hand while placing your left hand behind patient's left lower ribs. Causes of splenomegaly include lymphoma, lymphatic leukemia, hemolytic anemia, portal hypertension, infections which include glandular fever, malaria, tuberculosis, and SLE. For each kidney, place one hand behind patient at the loin, flick kidney, up and press down abdomen with the upper hand. For aorta, palpate midline above umbilicus. Is it expansile? For bladder, ask patient when you void bladder last time. Palpates propubic area. Now we move towards percussion. While percussing liver, ask patient to hold breathe in full expiration. Percus downwards from fifth into costal space in mid clavicular line listening dullness that indicate upper border of liver. Measure the distance in centimeter below the costal margin in mid clavicular line or from the upper border of dullness to palpable liver edge. For spleen, percus over lateral chest wall to confirm or exclude splenic dullness. Detecting ascites from percussion required significant skills. This process include two steps one is shifting dullness and other is fluid thrill. For shifting dullness, percus from midline out to the flanks. Note any changes from resonant to dull. Keep your finger on the site of dullness in the flank and ask the patient to turn on his opposite side. Wait 10 to 15 seconds to allow acidic fluid to gravitate, then percus again. If area of dullness is now resonant, shifting dullness is positive, indicating Ascites. If abdomen is tensely distended and you are not sure whether ascites present, feel for fluid thrill. Place the palm of your left hand flat against left side of patient's abdomen and flick a finger of your right hand against the right side of abdomen. Feel the ripple against your left hand. Ask assistant or patient to place such of his hand on midline of abdomen. This prevents transmission of ripple through skin. If you still feel a ripple against your left hand, fluid thrill is positive. Now we are heading towards last part of our examination that is auscultation. Before making contact with your steth to abdomen, make sure it is warm. Place your steth's diaphragm to right of umbilicus and do not move it. Listen for two to three minutes for bowel sounds. Then listen above the umbilicus over the altar for arterial brewery. Place steph 2 to 3 cm above and lateral to umbilicus for renal artery stenosis brewery. Normal findings include bowel sounds are gurgling sounds from normal peristaltic activity of gut, normally occur every 5 to 10 seconds but frequency varied, and the abnormal findings are absence of bowel sounds which occur in paralytic ileus and peritonitis, presence of brew. That may suggest a theromatous and aneurysma order. After examining the abdomen, please don't forget to check herneal orifice and genitalia. Without this your examination is incomplete. When you have done your examination say thanks to your patient and cover the exposed parts. Thanks for watching. For more videos please subscribe to our YouTube channel OACE Design. If you like this video please share with your friends and give us your feedback. Thanks.